And the date was May, 1953. And the place, Nevada. And just outside the town of Las Vegas, at Nellis Air Force Base, a series of events took place. Events not included in routine airfield operations. The 280 millimeter guns were taken off their railroad flat cars and started on the 65 mile journey to the Atomic Energy Commission's Nevada Proving Ground, where they would provide the proof of their atomic might. On their way through Las Vegas, the big guns experienced no trouble whatsoever in negotiating the city streets. On the sharpest of turns, however, was where they really proved their mettle. Handled exactly like the biggest hook and ladder trucks of any fire department, but some 30 feet longer and many tons heavier, the guns took every twist and turn in stride. They are big, but flexible. Once out of Las Vegas, they settled down to the long grind north to the proving ground. During field operations involving the 280 millimeter gun, they travel in batteries such as these. A battery consists of two guns. Three batteries make up a battalion. The battalions provide support for field army or separate corps action. There are, with each battery, nine support vehicles acting as transports for gun personnel, supplies, and ammunition. In convoy on hard-topped highways, the guns can travel at 30 miles per hour, and in spite of their road weight of 76 tons, can use the standard army bridges wherever necessary. 70 miles north of Las Vegas was the turnoff to the firing site. In 1944, when the original design specifications were drawn up, the gun was to have been a 240 millimeter weapon. However, these specifications were soon changed by the rapidly advancing artillery capabilities and the foreshadowing of the atomic age. Instead, were substituted the designs for a 280 millimeter weapon with not only HE, but atomic firepower. In 1951, the gun was tested as a normal artillery piece at Aberdeen. Needless to say, these tests were successful. All that remained was to check out its other capability, the atomic shell. Even on secondary roads or rough terrain, the guns retain relatively high mobility in spite of the fact that their speeds are lowered to approximately 10 miles per hour. The main reason for this mobility are the prime movers connected to the front and the rear of each weapon. Each prime mover is capable of 365 horsepower. Just one of these cabs has 50% more payload than the largest western highway truck. For a heavyweight fighter, the big guns are light on their toes. Once at the firing site, the line of fire was given and the guns were directed to their respective emplacements. After getting into position, the rear cab lowers the gun and moves away. Then the front cab winches the tube into battery and moves away. Unlike field operations of World War II, these guns need no extensive ground preparations. In most cases, there is no necessity for excavation of any kind. The entire 47-ton weight of the gun itself is balanced by a turntable and three jacks to hairbreadth specifications. For the total time to prepare for firing, just 20 minutes.
After being emplaced in their firing positions, and prior to the firing of the Mark 9 atomic shell, a series of HE rounds were fired. These rounds served the purpose of a final check on the many ballistic variables which could affect the accuracy in a given situation. Unlike the standard artillery weapons, which are single recoil mechanisms, the 280 millimeter gun has the advantage of a double recoil action. When fired, the tube recoils into the upper carriage, and then the upper carriage recoils. Such a system is the main reason for the lack of ground preparation needed before firing. A folding trough is used to load the projectile and the propellant. During firing operations, ramming can be done both manually and hydraulically. The gun is capable of a 360 degree traverse and can go to a maximum elevation of 55 degrees. The time for rehearsals and final checkouts is over now as zero hour approaches. The big gun is ready to prove its atomic punch with the firing of the Mark 9 shell as one phase of Operation Upshot Knothole in the Nevada desert. Everything functions with a precision found in any capable, well-trained team. Zero hour is minutes away now. The projectile is prepared and brought to the gun. The final correct setting for time of burst is made. closed and the primer inserted. Once loaded, the gun's elevation is set with a gunner's quadrant. Sighting is done with a panoramic telescope. the last step, the primer is connected and continuity of timing and firing circuits is completed between the control point and the firing site. With everything set now, the gun crew moves back to take positions in slip trenches during firing. The time is 0830. The date 25 May, 1953. Four, three, two, one. With a degree of accuracy four times greater than any gun developed before World War II, the 280 millimeter gun has proven its worth capable of delivering the atomic shell some 13 miles under any weather condition, day or night, the big gun provides more accurate and damaging support to ground troops than any other gun in the recorded history of warfare. Exceedingly powerful, but flexible, and with a high degree of mobility, the 280 millimeter gun is one of the Army Field Force's newest tactical weapons.